what's going on everybody what is going on it is monday february 19th 2024 and we are here for a midday stream here on the tori and rainbow little channel if you have not done so already please be sure to go ahead and hit that like button hit that share button i will greatly appreciate it shout out to everybody that is here so far let me give a shout out to my people over on patreon those who are members of the channel people over in discord twitter instagram all of those who send me stories even though i may not be able to get to all of them it is what it is but i do applaud you and thank you nonetheless so we have a very interesting topic that will be discussed today and i intentionally decided to do this topic today because today is quote unquote president's day and i said you know what this would be the perfect day to actually do it this is actually a topic i had thought about doing uh for a while now but i just had to wait until the right time to actually execute the topic of discussion and it's one that rarely if ever gets talked about it probably has been talked about but it doesn't get talked about enough but before i do that let me go ahead and acknowledge those who are in the chat so far blood bound denise scales dow m for movies joseph washington black light revelations 2 don p ben yehuda key prince Hack sign KT, Jerry Bedford, Stay Positive, and Kid Gravity. And I also intentionally did it today, too, because I knew a lot of people would be off today, so I knew I would have quite a bit of engagement. But it's going to be a very interesting topic nonetheless, because I knew exactly the direction I wanted to head with this topic. And I have to give an early shout out to Professor Black Truth, because his Moment of Truth video that he did today while it was about Fonnie Willis, the second part of that video actually lines perfectly up with what I'm going to discuss towards the set. I guess you could say towards the end of it. But yeah, very, very interesting indeed. And shout out to Tata Man and AW1, also Cosmo Fury and Robin and Battle have just entered in as well. So let me go ahead and get started no need to prolong it and of course you know at the end i will drop the link for anybody who would like to come up and elaborate even more on this topic of discussion so but by a show of i would say by ones and twos put a one in the chat if y'all knew there was a such thing at one point in time called the negro republican party Put a one in the chat if you knew. Put a two if you were unaware. I knew that there was one. That's what prompted me to make this video, to do this stream, because I heard about it before a while ago. All right. So we see Blueberry said one. Kid Gravity, Kid Gravity, I already knew you was going to say one. Uh, Denise said, has one. Hack sign says two. I'm looking for all the twos. Dairy says two. Opal Ivy says two. Chillmonger says two. One and one. Okay. And two. Well, I really wanted to address the twos because the ones are definitely aware. Yes, at one point in time, there was something called the Negro Republican Party, which was basically formed just for black people to, well, mainly at that time, black men, to have their views as it, pertain, as it pertained to politics at that time. And they had to do it that way because they were not going to allow them to be engaged with white republicans so they created their own thing so i'm gonna read this article this piece right here that's going to give you a rundown of what the negro republican party is and why it's no longer in existence and this is the only, this is to show you where the republic the, the where black americans were at when the republican party was at one point in time versus where they are today and trust me it's a complete night and day contrast of each other when I tell you, trust me when I tell you this, the Negro Republican Party was one name used in the period before the end of the civil rights movement for a branch of the Republican Party in the southern United States, particularly Kentucky, that was predominantly made up of African Americans. In the Republican Party in the South during the Civil War, and Reconstruction era, as well as decades thereafter, there was a split in the party's constituency and organization, 
One faction consisted of conservative white moderates who either gleefully or with reluctance accepted limits on African-American civil rights and generally excluded African-Americans from party participation, especially in leadership. Nationally, this faction was aligned with the contemporary moderate Republicans, also known as half-breeds, following the end of the Reconstruction and the Compromise of 1877. The other faction consisted of African-Americans and so-called radicals who supported Black American civil rights and party participation. Nationally, this faction was aligned with the contemporary radical Republicans, including the stalwart, stalwart faction of the party, which subsequently materialized upon the Compromise of 1877 and succeeded the radicals thereafter. One method of Black participation in the Republican Party at the time included involvement in the union leagues. Republican political organizations formed in the South in 1867 during the Reconstruction era to promote black political activity and civil rights named after the organizations of the same name formed in the North during the Civil War to promote activity in favor of the Union. Now, I saw Judah had wrote a comment said, too, I knew there were black Republicans, but I didn't know of this party. Well, see, the twos, the people who left twos today, y'all are getting a history lesson. And let me just add a disclaimer to anybody who comes over here. No, I am not a Republican, nor am I a Democrat. If you've been watching my videos, I am a registered independent and have been since September. It's just the reason why I'm doing this video. It's just, it's just the reason I'm doing this stream because it's like I'm giving y'all a timeline from the beginning to where they are now. And just to put basically put in perspective of why black people don't need to be over there. I'm just saying. After circa 1890, when the factional division in the National Republican Party between the half-breeds and stalwarts is generally understood to have ended, the pro-Black racially inclusive faction of the Republican Party in the South became generally known as the Black and Tan faction, while the racially exclusive white-centric faction became generally known as the Lily White movement. William F. Butler of Jefferson County, Kentucky, spoke at the first convention of the Negro Republican Party held in Lexington, Kentucky in November 1867 and became the president of the party. He was a leading Baptist preacher in Maysville and Paris until he died in 1889. Democrats opposed civil rights and voting rights for African-Americans who were the majority of eligible voters in some states. In 1866, the Old Guard magazine accused the Democrats of using force and fraud to gain and retain power and representing but a despised faction of the American people. Now, if y'all been following my uh, my Black Massacre series that I did last year, most of those massacres that happened happened under the Demo under the Democrat regime. Just a little tidbit for y'all. And for those of y'all who missed it, I have a whole playlist dedicated. Y'all can go back and watch it for yourself. You'll see the name Democrat pop up a lot in those massacres. In the 1890s, the New Orleans Times published editorials in favor of disenfranchisement of Negroes on the basis that they were unfit to vote, ignorant, shiftless, depraved, and criminal-minded. Why does that sound like today? Why does that sound a lot like the stuff that they say about Black people today? And this was in the 1890s. It is 2024, and they're still saying the same exact thing. and would be controlled by a ring of white politicians. In September 1895, after a powwow of the Negro Republican Party, the time claimed that whites will be willing to accept subordinate positions in the party to control the Negro vote. In his 1920 book, Children of the Slaves, the British author Stephen Graham mentions that in the New Orleans, that in New Orleans, the Negro Republican Party could not count for much in votes. Black American males were allowed some voting rights in Alabama until 1901, when the state functionally disenfranchised them, although still technically letting them register. The Negro Republican Party in Birmingham, Alabama, was organized in opposition to the Lily White Republican Party. So as you can see, while black Americans still had a 
were like Republicans at that time, they still were separate. They were not a unit at all, much like how they're still not a unit today. And y'all will see exactly what I mean when I upload my video about Matt Gates towards the end of the week. In Maryland, my state, while the Democrats were typically against allowing blacks to vote at all, the Republicans wanted to give them this and other basic rights, but many did not want blacks to hold important political offices or to have frequent contacts with whites. What did I tell you? Left wing, right wing, two wings attached to the same buzzard. Let me read that to y'all again. In the state of Maryland, my state, while the Democrats were typically against allowing blacks to vote at all, the Republicans wanted to give them this and basic rights. But many did not want blacks to hold important political offices or to have frequent contacts with whites. So what they're saying is we'll allow you to go only so far. But not so far as you have a position where you call the shots. Now, if I remembered anything about this party before I started reading any of this today, that part right there, when I first learned about this, that's the part that stood out the most to me. So they basically gave them a glass ceiling and saying, you can only get up to here, but don't you dare think you're going to get any further than that. You will not stand beside me, let alone above me. You will always be beneath me. But hey, at least we're better than the Democrats because they're not going to let you vote at all. Now, if you've noticed over the years, it has flipped. Now, the Democrats of today sound more like the Republicans of then and the Republicans of then Sounds like well, no the, Rep the, Rep the excuse me the uh the Democrats of let me get it right now the Republicans sound more like the Democrats of then. Their vote was important to the Republicans, however, in 1909, at a time when the Democrats were pushing for disenfranchisement in the state. The Republicans called on all members of the Negro, Negro Republican Party to turn out on voting day in every district. So basically they said, well, we're not going to give you a higher position, but we need you to do something for us, because if not, then those pesky Democrats are going to overthrow us. Why, again, does that sound like today? Like I'm telling you, everything that they did back then, they're still doing right now. They have not missed a beat. Like I told you, they're pretty much the same thing. So that was a little history lesson, y'all, on the Negro Republican Party. Now I'm going to shift over to this other um, article that I saw on the uh, Pew Research Center that's dated November 7, 2022. 10 facts about black Republicans. So we're doing a little bit of a time jump. I just wanted to give you a little backstory. Now we're doing a little time jump. The relationship between black Americans and the Republican Party has drawn considerable attention in recent years. Discussions have ranged from why black men voted for Donald Trump at higher rates than black women in the 2020 presidential election to more recent debates about black pop culture and the appeal of GOP aligned candidates in both national and local politics. The partisan balance among black adults in the United States is little changed over the last several decades, but it shifted substantially in the mid 20th century. In the 1930s, black adults were just as likely to support the Republican Party as the Democratic Party. The share of black adults who affiliated with the GOP started to decline in the 1940s, particularly after President Harry S. Truman, a Democrat, issued an executive order to desegregate the U.S. military in 1948. This shift was solidified after the passage of the Civil Rights Act under Democratic President Lyndon Johnson in 1964. Today, only about one in 10 black adults identify with or lean toward the Republican Party. 
And in a Pew Research Center survey in October, only 4% of black registered voters said they would vote for the Republican candidate for the U.S. House seat in their district, while 69% said they would vote they, that they would back the Democratic candidate. When it comes to their views on race, black Republicans differ from black Democrats on, in one key way. They tend to support individual individualistic approaches to addressing racial inequality, while black Democrats tend to support institutional approaches. For example, black Republicans who and those who lean to the GOP are more likely than Jim, black Democrats and Democratic leaders, 59 percent versus 41 percent, to say that the bigger problem for black people is racist acts committed by individual people as opposed to racism in our laws. And they are less likely than black Democrats to support complete institutional overhauls to the prison system, 35 versus 57 percent, policing 29 to 50 versus 52 percent, and the judicial process, 35 percent versus 50 percent to ensure fair treatment of black people. Here are 10 facts about black Republicans and what they think about race and identity based on recent center surveys about all findings about black, of Republicans and Democrats include independents who lean to each party. So we about to go ahead and see what these 10 facts are, because I have no clue what they're going to say. Okay, fact number one. Black Republicans are younger than black Democrats as well as white Republicans. Around three in 10 black Republicans, which is 28%, are ages 18 to 29, higher than share among black Democrats, which is 17%, and white Republicans, which is 10%. Black Republicans are less likely than black Democrats and white Republicans to be 65 and older. 9% are in this age group versus 18% of black Democrats and 28% of white Republicans. Put a one in the chat if y'all agree with that and put a two if you do not. And the question is, do you agree that black Republicans are younger than black Democrats and white Republicans, or do you disagree that they are not? The next fact reads, black Republicans have a similar income profile to black Democrats. Black Republicans are about as likely as black Democrats to live in upper income, which is 12% versus 10%, or middle income households, 37% versus 40%, and roughly half of both groups live in lower income ones. However, black Republicans are much more likely than white Republicans, 50 versus 18%, to live in lower income households. The third one reads, as is the case among black Democrats, roughly half of black Republicans live in the South. Black Republicans are about as likely as black Democrats to live in Southern states, but more likely than white Republicans to do so. Black Republicans are less likely than white Republicans to live in the Midwest or the West. The fourth one says, Black Republicans are less likely than black Democrats to attend black churches. Now, that one I kind of agree with. That one I tend to, and it seemed like the only time. Speaking of, uh, has Tim Scott been on his duties lately? Because didn't uh, <laughs> didn't 45 tell him to start going out there and try to recruit black people? Has he been on his duties? Because I don't know if he has. In both parties, most black adults identify as Protestant. However, black Republicans are less likely than black Democrats to attend predominantly black Protestant churches. Black Republicans and Democrats are about as likely to be Catholic or religiously unaffiliated. Number five, black Republicans are less likely than black Democrats to say being black is a significant part of their personal identity. Now, I'm going to just stop right there. Put a one in the chat if you agree with that. Put a two if you don't. 
Like, really, like, y'all don't even have to think hard about that one. Well, wow, about six in 10 black Republicans say being black is an extremely or very important part of how they became, they think of themselves. An even larger share of, of black Democrats say the same. Black Republicans are also more likely than black Democrats to say blackness is a little or not at all important to how they think about themselves. See, I knew I was going to get a one out of, I knew I was going to get a one out of y'all for number five. Because that one, I definitely believe to be true. I wholeheartedly believe that to be true, especially with the subject matters we've seen as of late. All right, let's go on to number six. Number six says, black Republicans are about as likely as black Democrats to see their ancestry as important to how they see themselves. Black Republicans are just as likely as black Democrats to say their ancestry is an extremely or very important part of their personal identity. They are also about as likely as black Democrats to know that their ancestors were enslaved and to speak about their relatives, about their family history. This can go into the thing of how they feel about reparations. Like this part right here. This kind of piggybacks off of number five, but this one can go any, even further as far as how they perceive or talk about reparations or how they say we don't deserve it or we don't need it. And we've seen that plenty of times too. But not only for them, we've even seen black Democrats say it too, but they try to say it in a more, uh, in a more coded way. Whereas they would just flat out repeat whatever their PC master tells them to say. Number seven, black Republicans are less likely than black Democrats to express a sense of quote unquote linked fate with black people in the U.S. About four in 10 black Republicans say that everything or most things that happen to black people in the U.S. will affect their own lives. A larger share of Democrats say the same. Number eight, black Republicans are about as likely as black Democrats to report frequent experiences of discrimination. About eight in 10 black Republicans say they have personally experienced discrimination because of their race or ethnicity. This includes 20% who say they have experienced discrimination regularly and 59% who say they have experienced it from time to time. Similarly, 80% of black Democrats report experiences of racial discrimination either regularly or from time to time. I do too, uh, Blueberry Muffin. I do. That's a heavy, bolded number two for me, as far as number eight goes. Number nine, Black Republicans differ from Black Democrats in their views on racial discrimination as a barrier to progress. Despite experiencing racial discrimination at similar rates, Black Republicans and Democrats differ in how they view its effects. Black Republicans are less likely than Black Democrats to say racial discrimination is the main reason Black people can't get ahead in the U.S. And they are more likely to say Black people who can't get ahead are most likely responsible for their own condition. That's facts. That is facts. Number nine is all factual. When they love the, because that's nothing but a talking point from PC. They love to say that. So far, I think number nine and number five, and maybe even number seven, are the ones that actually definitely are factual out of the ones on this list. And number 10. Black Republicans are just as skeptical as Black Democrats about the prospects for equality. 
black Republicans are about as likely as black Democrats to say equality for black people in the U.S. is a little or not all likely. In fact, only about 15 percent of black adults in either partisan coalition say equality for black people is extremely or very likely. So those were the 10 facts from the Pew Research Center. They said about black Republicans, some of them were kind of shaky, but number five and number nine, for sure. They were on point about that one, definitely. Black Light said, that's what BCP said about the amazing Luger. Man, listen, that whole exchange, well, I don't, well, you know, I don't listen. We don't listen to that other one unless we try to, unless we roasting them. But yeah, that guy's a clown. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, I'm going to show y'all a couple of examples of, I guess you can say, black conservatives of today. Now, keep in mind where we all started with uh, the Negro Republican Party and how it's a far cry from where it once was at so i'm gonna start right here i'm only going to highlight two of them because i don't have the strength to go through a whole bunch of them because it is something i do want to show towards the end terrence k williams this clown right here now i had a different post that i was going to highlight to him but i said nah this one this one, let me just talk about this one so this is a post that he was responding to from a person named Arch Change Antoine. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name or not. And he was replying to Angela Rye with lettuce and tomatoes on the side, like, <laughs> like Professor Black Truth says. And he said he's selling pancakes now. At W underscore Terrence, we need them KKK pancakes, LOL. To which Terrence responded with, so now they're calling my pancakes KKKK, K, K, triple K pancakes. I'll just leave, leave it like that. We are living in a world where a black man is called a called white supremacist for thinking for himself, for selling pancakes. We are doing, well, here's the thing. He's not even thinking for himself. The guy's a grifter. He's not even thinking for himself. And they have the nerve to say that this guy is funny. But you know, we, like us over here, and them have a different level of, I guess, you, like have a different comedic funny bone. Then he says, my cousin T pancakes are some damn good, quote unquote, racist cakes. He'll do anything he can to try and push these dry ass Karen battered ass pancakes. There's a difference between being funny and being funny looking and he falls under the ladder. So remember what I keep telling y'all about the grifter? And who's worse between the grifter and the supporter? Well, this is the grifter putting out his little back call. And these are his supporters and who try to back him up. So you have this Diane person says, never stop, Terrence, never. And this person says, what do you call someone who always plays the victim? A manipulator is a person that likes to play the victim. The person likes to gain pity and sympathy from people. That's exactly what Terrence did. But of course, you can't tell his, his supporters that. Someone says, I absolutely do not like pancakes, but now I want to buy boxes and boxes of them. To what? Collect dust? This one says, another day of Terrence triggering the libs. Someone says, uh, they don't know your story. They going to talk no matter what you're doing. We don't need to know his story, but we know how he is, and that's enough for us. I love your pancakes and your syrup. They do not see the injustice that comes with their judgment. It's so disheartening and, quite frankly, embarrassing. There is no need to be that way. Reminds me, I have to reorder. His pancakes and cornbread are great. I need three semis of these pancakes ASAP. And, I mean, I can go on and on and on and on, but they're just filling up his head. But that's going to go into a bigger point that I have at the end. And before I go any further, uh, let me address what Chris Pullins put in. There. He says, not every black conservative is a sellout. I do know some who is very pro-black. Um, There is one 
I don't know if I would consider him pro black, but uh, past the Darrell Scott. Now, I had some words about him a few years ago because he definitely was tap dancing quite a bit at one point in time. But I guess in some form of fashion, he found a way to see the light. And shout out to Lisa Cabrera because she actually did a video about uh, Charlie Kirk this morning. Ironically, I did one on him less than an hour ago where he uh, when she was talking about how Trump is trying to pull the reins back on Charlie Kirk because he's like, how am I supposed to get black people to support me if you keep pushing out all this propaganda? And I put up on my ex account yesterday and shout out to Rob over at Black Light Revelations where we were saying, let's just designate Charlie Kirk as the speaker for white people because let's be real here. Y'all saw those posts that in the screenshot from the video I just did. That's how the majority of them think and feel about us. If I would have just, I could have did a whole probably 20 minute video just on all the screenshots from the replies that people left under there but we ain't have that kind of time and i know y'all didn't come there to see that y'all just needed a, a sample for what that was because some of y'all are not on x so y'all wouldn't see that but pastor darrell scott is the only quote-unquote black Republican or conservative that I've seen that consistently calls out Charlie Kirk. And when he does call out Charlie Kirk, he get he gets met with a bunch of pushback. Why? Because many of them think just like him and then have the nerve to say they want black support. They really don't. That man, listen, just pay attention to the video that I'm going to bring to y'all at at the end of the week about Matt Gates trying to diversify Magaville and how they replied to him. And I guarantee he'll never bring that up again. And I have my, I have a lot of issues with Matt Gates, but I said, let me talk about that because apparently a lot of these black quote unquote conservatives haven't gotten a hint yet. But when y'all see that and see what they replied with, he basically got off cold and he straightened right the hell back up afterwards. Because he wasn't trying to lose his spot. So I'm done with Terrence K. Williams. Let's move on to this guy right here. Now, shout out to Kid Gravity. I don't know if Kid Gravity is still here. Oh, he's still here. Uh, in the chat, he actually brought this person to my attention. This one, this guy by the name of black southerner where and listen to what he has to say as it pertains to the uh lift every voice and sing being performed at the super bowl last well not last well not yesterday but two now two sundays ago hey everybody if we gonna have the negro national anthem being played before the Super Bowl and other games, then we should have the Latino national anthem play before the games. And then we should have the Asian national anthem before we have a game. And then, yes, I'm gonna say it. Oh no, we should have the white national anthem play before the game. Diversity. Or we can cut the crap and you can tell black folk cut it there's only one national anthem and it starts off oh say can we see so here you have kid gravity kg i'm so sorry to have to hurt your eyes and ears again after you had to roast slow roast this guy like a week ago but yeah i had to include him because many of y'all never heard of this guy I always tell y'all, y'all got to be aware of who these people are before they try to blow up. Now, look at his attire. Let's just focus on what he's wearing. He has on a hat that says 1776. He has a shirt on that says 1776 on one side and on the side, it says we the people going down. it. While he's up here and bucking his, I mean, this man bucked his eyes the whole time, you know those little things, like if you get LASIK surgery, they put that clamp in your eye to keep your eyes open. That's what he looked like. He looked like he was about to get LASIK, a LASIK procedure. And he's up there talking about what if they had an Asian national anthem, which I'm sure they have one, 
a Hispanic one, which I'm sure they have one. But what got me is he said white national anthem. Let's hypothetically say they, well, first off, is this is how dumb they are, y'all. They put themselves in their own blender and try to make it seem like they're making a point. Exactly, August, the national anthem or the Star Spangled Banner is the PC anthem. He thought he thought he was making a point. He thought. Now, I'm going to read to you one reply. I'm going to read to you a, a reply that a black woman gave to him. And I want y'all to see how he replied back to her. So we have this person whose name is Rashida S. She says, oh, here's the quote unquote Jamal Matt Gates was speaking of. And then she replied with the gift of. Uh, of I guess the stage play where Denzel Washington was on stage and he slammed the door in the white guy's face. Very popular uh, meme. Look at what he replied with. You the ones who have multiple babies by the same men who already have multiple children by different women and you blame everyone but yourselves. Black women are the most enrolled not the most educated, and then put a meme there calling this woman a hood rat. All because she said this is the Jamal Matt Gates was speaking of. She never called this man out of his name. She's like, oh, this is that guy. So apparently Matt Gates is aware of this dude. Makes a lot of sense now. But he called her a hood rat and accused her of having multiple babies. How did he know that this woman isn't married with a family of her own? So someone else replied with, you do realize you just dished your mother or is she quote unquote different? It says every black woman ain't the same. Some black women wait until they're married to have children. How do you know this woman isn't married and has kids? He says, can your mama say that? Was your mama the neighborhood hoe? This is how he's responding to other black people who are calling him out. Now he's calling someone else's mother a hoe. Someone else says, this is a bad look from your initial post and your response. Sounds like you're pandering and dancing too hard. If you are indeed black American, you have a history here. Latinos and whatever that country would be doesn't have a national anthem. You probably fetishize Latin women, though. Someone else said, here's the deflection. And another person says, you wish you could get a black woman. I pray you go hunting with PC people. Now, notice also, too, that this dude put up the who can reply. Verified accounts or accounts mentioned by black Southern can reply. So that means the heat was getting too much for him. He ended up making it where only certain amount of people could reply. And then he made sure to post his little link under here. He says, want to challenge me and what I say, here you go. And then he it is a link to his rumble account. This is what the black conservative has devolved into as a collective. There are some probably out there that are not like that. As a matter of fact, well, this person wouldn't be an example. But the bed bucking examination that I'm going to do on Saturday, man, I wish y'all knew of who this guy was. If y'all knew who this guy was, that the votes on that poll probably would have been a little bit higher. But that's okay. Many of y'all don't even know who it is I'm going to be talking about on Saturday. But when y'all see that on Saturday, y'all can be like, whoa. Like, what the hell is wrong with this person, this individual? Now, if you think what this black southerner said was crazy, wait till y'all see the bed bucket examination I do on this person on Saturday. It's the post I found that he made a little while ago is worse than this. Y'all probably, how can it get any more worse? Trust me, it does.
Shimonga says he seems driven by hate. No, he's driven by money. This is all a grift. And I'm going to show y'all what I mean by this when I play this clip from Professor Black Truth. And shout out to him because I want y'all to hear this part right here. I'm going to turn the speed up a little bit. Shout out to Professor Black Truth. He may or may not be watching this. But I want y'all to hear this last couple of minutes uh, of uh, what he said when he was talking about this guy named Jamal. I'm sorry, James Craig. And once this plays out, then I'll drop the link. Apparently, he was running for an open U.S. Senate seat in Michigan. He was running as a Republican. I guess that's why I didn't even know this clown was even in the running. This guy who, by the way, has appeared on Fox News numerous times, always to attack the black community and always. Now, before I let it go any further, let me pause it right here. Doesn't he look like uh, Thomas Sowell in this picture? He looks just like Thomas Sowell. And that's not a compliment. To repeat the white supremacist line, he just knew that all those racist white right wingers that he was kissing the crusty behinds of and going out of his way to cater to them, he just knew they would love his stinking drawers and be tripping over their shoelaces and their Jethro Bodine rope belts so that they could vote for him. Only they didn't. Yeah, just like Daniel Cameron, he thought that he would run for higher office literally over Breonna Taylor's dead body, but that white GOP voter base that he was hoping for never materialized. See, that's the problem these clowns don't get just because they pretend, oh, I don't see color. I just see nothing but Americans here. Yeah, the problem is them GOP voters, they do see color. And they Now, listen to what Professor Black Truth just said. P re refer back to when I was talking about on the 10 facts about the Black Republican from the, P re the Pew Research Center. What did number five say about them not seeing color? About them not acknowledging their blackness? And we all agree that was a fact. Professor Black Troop just said it right here because it is a fact. Many of them have they they feel the same exact way. They feel like if I don't if I don't acknowledge my blackness, then I'll be good with them. And look at he has a typical look. He has no facial hair. He has to look and perform a certain way. A lot of these so-called black conservatives are very performative. You don't like yours. They preferred having a Democrat in office over having a black Republican. Yeah, James Craig is finding out that that glass ceiling that's over his head, too. And no, you ain't breaking through it anytime real soon. But this isn't the first time that Negro James Craig has had his political ambitions crash and burn. He tried and failed to run for the governor of Michigan two years ago. That time his campaign imploded after it was shown that a number of the signatures that he had collected to get himself on the ballot had been forged. Oh, well, well look at that. <laughs> well, look at that. He couldn't even run a fair campaign because he knew his ass was going to lose and he got caught. Any of the signatures appear to have been written by the same person. Now, of course, James Craig claims to know absolutely nothing about that. His lawyer said, why, my client here is the victim of his own stupidity, perhaps. So this guy is a certified two-time loser, no doubt going for a three-peat. He's a perpetual candidate now, just like Kerry Lake. He's just going to keep on putting his name on the ballot for something, governor, senator, dog catcher, anything, until eventually the law of averages kicks in and he wins something because, well, it's just time mathematically for him to get something. He couldn't control Detroit. He couldn't even control his... Wait, uh, uh, Blacklight said, check out my comment about what that Detroit cop did. He says, James Craig has appeared on the laws. Uh, this clown saved anti-black Detroit pig Stephen Q's job. Stephen Q is an AAPI officer with 80 plus complaints of racism against him in Detroit. Why am I not surprised by that? Why am I not surprised? Again, think about where the Negro Republican Party was at then. And look at where so-called black conservatives are right now. It's again, it's night and day. There's no comparison. There's like there's like they're two different crowds. His own campaign. Now, who wouldn't want that kind of sterling leadership? Apparently everyone. This guy's reputation already precedes him. See, that's the thing the bootlicks never understand. These people who they think they're sucking up to, all they're doing is earning their contempt. When you sit here making it clear that you are just so desperate, so thirsty to get their attention, to get their support, they don't look at you and say, oh, well, here's somebody we can count on. Instead, they look at you, and at best, they see a useful idiot, and at worst, they see a begging dog who they just don't want around. Oh, that was a burn of a line right there. Let me replay that part. Let me replay that thirsty to get their attention, to get their support. They don't look at you and say, oh, well, here's somebody we can count on. Instead, they look at you and at best, they see a useful idiot. And at worst, they see a begging dog who they just don't want around. He said at best, they see a useful idiot. And at worst, they see a dog that they don't want around. When are they going to get that through their heads? Because that doesn't apply to just one of them. That applies to all of them. 
But my question is, why is this guy calling himself a conservative? Now, I want y'all to really pay attention to this part. This is the part. This is the point right here that drives this whole part of the story home. This part that Professor Black Troop is about to say is what drives home this whole story involving James Craig. But it doesn't just apply to him. It applies to all of them. Why is he trying to be a conservative? The black conservative is a contradiction in terms, not just because these clowns are all two big grifters who only trash black people so they can get some easy money from white racists, but also because the word conservative comes from the root term conserve. As Dr. John Henry Clark said, what is a black person in America trying to conserve? Did y'all hear that? He started off saying because they're trying to get money out of their PC base, which is what they're doing. That's, that's all part of grifting. As long as they keep saying stuff that PC wants to hear, they're going to continue to contribute to them to make money. That's how many of them make their bones. If they stop, the check stops rolling in. And let me just uh, continue to go even further. There was a post that um, was made on Twitter or something or X, whatever, and it was in response to the Amazing Lucas. Now, everyone knows the Amazing Lucas was one way at one point, but he shifted like a few years ago. And he ended up losing uh, thousands of subscribers literally like it within a week. I remember seeing that drop literally happen in real time. He had made a post on uh, on X and some troll, I don't know who it was, had replied back to him. They basically, in so many words, tried to accuse Lucas of being racist because he would not tap dance for them anymore. I kid you not, it has gotten to that point because he decided that he does not, that he chose not to do that anymore, that somehow he is a liberal, he's a leftist, as they like to call it, and all this, that, and the third. They did the same thing with Darrell Scott. Remember how I said he consistently calls out Charlie Kirk and he got so much pushback because they like what Charlie Kirk has to say and they feel like because he has some influence they don't like him anymore. They only like you or love you, quote unquote, when you're speaking on their behalf, when you're making them feel good and making them feel some kind of comfort. That's why they don't like us, because we ain't going to stand for their bullshit. As a matter of fact, TBA did a, a, a live stream. I'm, I'm sorry, a broadcast to like not the one he did about Matt Walsh. I think that was on Saturday. We had Matt Walsh getting up there lying about reparations. He even called Tariq out by name. So they be watching us. Oh, trust and believe. They be watching us. Sat up there and just lied to his audience. Didn't know what the hell he was talking about. He just up there talking, just babbling. What part of America's past is so wonderful and rosy that any black person would want to return to it? It's all an ethno-political performance put on to impress and get money from a white audience. The problem for there it is. He says all a political performance to get money out of white audiences. AKA a grift. That is what the collective of the quote unquote black conservative has divulged into. Terrence K. Williams, the Black Southerner, BCP, I'm not going to say his whole name, the Hodge Twins, Candace Owens, Fakem, and so many more. And then they'll have the nerve to have their supporters come and say that they can out-debate us. I would love to see them try. Yep, Larry Elder, ABL, and so many more. It's so many more to name. But like Kid Gravity said, November 5th is coming. And speaking of inv invitations, if anybody would like to come up and voice their opinion about everything or anything that I said, whether it was the history of the Negro Republican Party, that Pew Research article, or the examples that I gave, or that last part about what Professor Black Truth said, feel free to do so.
the link is now officially in the chat it is pinned to the top just in case the chat's moving too fast and you miss it y'all can go ahead and click it it is an off day for many of you so i know y'all are not on break unless you are an essential worker These are the same people. Keep this in mind, y'all. These are the same people that say we need to align with them. They keep saying, let's pull them off. Of Remember when Candace Owens saying we need to pull them off of the Democratic plantation. To go over there. So you want to leave one to go to another? I said, no, I will stay neutral and I'm going to kick my feet up and just watch this thing just crumble like the house of cars that it is. Let's see. First up, we got Joseph Washington. What's going on? Hey, Tarian. Salute chat room. I'm surprised to be first, but thanks. Mm -hmm. I, don't and... think, I, don't, yeah, I think I don't think Wallow J is in the chat right now. That's probably <laughs> why you first. Yeah, but um, is I'm so thankful that we have the new black media doing what we are supposed to do, especially around this um, election cycle. You probably heard them trying to revamp Kamala Harris, right? Yeah, I saw um, Professor Black Truth did his Sunday address on it yesterday. After listening to it, I was like, good luck. It's like, do y'all want a repeat of losing? <laughs> because it seems like now that they've seen the progress we made, they're just showing that they're going for punishment. Oh, definitely. Anyway, it's like, you know, even you have some of us in the community who are like staunch loyal Democrats or staunch loyal Republicans just stepping away from the background and say, you know what, I'm going to just sit back and see how this plays out. Because we're seeing from the right and the left, they're not going to do anything unless we force their hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said, the reason why I did this, that's why I had to give the disclaimer. I said, don't anyone come over here thinking that, oh. I'm supporting them. No, I'm not. I keep telling people I'm a registered Democrat. I can't support either one of them. I said, the reason why I'm doing this is because I could easily have gotten up here and did one about the Democrats. But like there's the reason why I don't do it is because I know and shout out to TD. I'm just say TD because I don't want to call it hip hop media because he took the hip hop out of his name. He does so many videos and live streams about them already. I said, let me talk about the history of the Republican Party as far as it pertains to black people so people can understand where it got where it came from and where it started to where it is now. They really only want us over there just so they can say there's black people there because they, they're they getting tired of being looked at one way. But as long as they got people like Charlie Kirk over there, Matt Walsh, and so many others like them, only black people that's going to be over, the one, over there are the self-hating ones like the two that I to talked to you about, Terrence K. Williams, and that black southerner and that one that professor black truth talked about that james craig those are the ones that those are the ones they tolerate oh don't let me see the one that talked about the national anthem in person i had and i had tomatoes in my hands <laughs> i will literally throw <laughs> throw what at them in person mm. but yeah i just wanted to come up here and say my piece but hey let's remain consistent um the momentum is in our favor. Let's just keep it rolling. Right. Definitely. Thanks for having me up. No problem. Thanks for coming up. Shout out to Joseph for coming up. Next up, we got Blueberry Muffin. What's going on? Hi. Good morning. Good afternoon. Tarian, greetings, mods, and everybody in the chat. Well, it's tool breaking season. Mm -hmm. And we're going coon hunt. <laughs> You know, I'm glad that you're educating us on the historical backdrop to show how jack shit hasn't changed in a hundred plus years. Oh, it's, definitely. And, and it's and it and you know when you rolled out the Negro Republican Party and all of the tricks, traps, and just dirty, underhanded political garbage, you see, hmm. Isn't that what's going on now? You can mm -hmm. 
it, a long time ago, my dad, who was a registered Republican, when he was uh, voting for Nixon back in the day, he just said, look, the only difference between a Republican and a Democrat is how you spell it. All right. Mm -hmm. You really have to learn um, politics itself. And if you decide to go into politics or go in deeply, you got to know what you want going in and coming out of it. Thank goodness the uh, new black media, such as yourself and others, are really informing everybody. First of all, stay on code at all mm -hmm. times. Don't waver from the code because uh, as long as we're moving in our way, a certain way, we got this. And, mm -hmm. and, and truth be told, when they keep Pander Bear, I mean, uh, Kamala, that Hindu heifer, out in the press like that, that's just desperation. I, I saw and tuned in astutely to the uh, Sunday address, and I'm like, you know, the uh, Democrat uh, National Convention is in Chicago this year, and it's supposed to be a hot summer. <laughs> 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 so I'm just stepping back and looking at where are the strategists who are behind this? You know how things are in Chicago and Milwaukee. You know how people are moving. Why, like you said, are they a glutton for punishment right now? Well, I'm just going to leave with, with this thought. As a registered independent since 2000, yes, since 2000, uh, I'm just saying, look, you know, since neither of those guys, the t Republicans and Democrats, are offering us, we might as well pit both of them against each other and see what, what we can get out of it. And if we can't get anything to our benefit, no tangibles, no votes, no reparation, no vote, uh, couch 2024. Hey, I'm Thank all you. for that. Appreciate Thank you coming back. No problem. Shout out to Blueberry Muck for coming up and contributing. Next up, we got Cosmo Fury. What's going on? Hey, what's going on, man? What's going on? Hey, um, I've been, this is going to be my third consecutive year, Couch 2024. I mean, I've even had, I've even had disagreements with my own family about it. Um, my immediate family, my mom and my sister. And I'm like, they told me you got to vote. I said, no, I don't. For what? what? What have we gotten out of it? Nothing. So I, I, I agree with, um, Blueberry. It, it's the truth. It, what? why and then as for one thing i was looking at i heard you mention was the whole 1776 apparel and those brother biscuit eating twins had that on and i was wondering what it was years ago what was that all about now it all makes sense looking at it now yep. but i guess they hold defiant act against uh you know the true end of period i'm at work i can't really say too much i understand yeah, so exactly. Um, I'm like, you do realize what was going on in 1776. <laughs> Our ancestors were still enslaved. Uh -huh. they, still, they still had, they still had like a little, like 90 something more years to go. I was like, yeah, yeah I was all caught up in that fiction with um, Denzel and Morgan Freeman and Matthew Broderick. That's not how it went down. Mm -hmm. Not all the time. You didn't fight for a chance. You were like, okay, thank you. Get back. Get back to what you were doing before, mm -hmm. you know. And but I'm not going to be there long. All right. You understand? All right, thank man. You, so, but thank, but thank for coming up. No problem, man. And good point on what Rob just said. That's what the Philadelphia 76ers are named after, 1776. And if you look at the 76ers logo. It's a red seven, a blue six, the ER, the ERS is blue, and it has those stars going around in a ring. Very interesting indeed. Next, we got talking and grubbing media. What's going on? What's up, Torian? How you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. That's good. Is it just me, or it seems like a lot of these black male conservatives all dress the same? Uh huh. 
Yeah, they got a certain is a is a certain attire. They got like the you know got the, the shirt on the 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 ball cap. They got a certain look with their facial hair. Yeah, and they all buck in their eyes like that. That's black southern. I mean, that man bucked his eyes for almost a minute. That's got to be a world record. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that clown also. I cannot stand Terrence K. Terrence K. Williams. That dude sounds more sassier than any woman I have ever ran across. Who you, I got a question. Who do you think talks more sassy, him or Roland Martin? <laughs> I got. I say Terrence K. <laughs> and you know that's bad, right? But also, what one thing a lot of people not some people aren't talking about some of these some black folks, not all. Some are just voting for Trump more like out of emotion. Mm-hmm. You know because. A lot of people had their anger with the Democrats, so they said, well, okay, I'm just going to go over to Trump. But it's like, he's not really saying nothing what he's doing for us either. Mm -hmm. And it's funny you mentioned that because I, when I was doing my uh, live stream on Friday when they were talking about, um, not not Friday, it was another live stream I did. It was the midday stream that I did uh, last week. It was something that I forgot to put in that stream. Because I thought I had lost the link, but I had it in my D. I sent it to myself the whole time. And the thing is, I have so much stuff in my DM, it could easily get lost. But it had something to do with uh, Trump. Let me see if I can um, pull that up right quick. Now that you now that you brought him up, because I want people to see this. Okay, here it is. It was a Newsweek article. Okay, here it is. Let me go ahead and share my screen uh right quick do y'all see this right here this is from newsweek january 12 2018 trump thinks only black people are on welfare but really white americans receive the most benefits somebody had to tell him that black people are not the only ones on welfare But y'all see it for yourself. That's why I said, that's why I said I cannot, I do not work well with either side. And if you know of 45's history and black people, but you know what? Who who what can I do? We are all grown people gonna make their own decisions at the end of the day. Because what happens yeah, is when you start pointing this stuff out, then people start doing the finger pointing thing. Oh, but this person is like this. No, but hold on. This person, they are like that. But that person is worse than this. But no, wait, 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 wait. No, this one did this and that. But this one is like, that's when they start doing the but this person and but that person. And they say, who's worse than this person? No, they're just both. They're both horrible. They try to basically they try to do the lesser of two evils type of thing. But the thing is. The key word there is evil. Whether they're less than or more than, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so I just wanted to point. So I just wanted to point bring this up because I forgot the when I was doing the the welfare stream last week. This is what I forgot to bring up. But you can go ahead. Yeah, but I'm like, okay, now everybody's talking about what Biden has it presented to black people but trump hasn't presented anything either yeah i know a lot of people said i'm glad you said that too everyone kept bringing up oh trump is about to do the platinum plan and i'm like let me look at this platinum plan right quick that everyone keeps hyping up and i did and i actually showed y'all last year what was in that platinum plan that platinum plan wasn't shit it really wasn't and it was very short and it had nothing in there about reparations. But you had a lot of black people, especially those black conservatives, going crazy for it and saying, oh, look, Trump is about to do all of this for black people. Now y'all got to go run vote for Trump. I said, no, you don't. I said, y'all didn't read that <laughs> platinum plan at all. And it wasn't even a long read. It was literally like reading a pamphlet. It was very short. Like, I think it was condensed to maybe one or two pages max. Definitely. And some of that stuff he got from Ice Cube. You mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but thanks, Tor. Thanks for thanks for letting me on, Tori. Oh, no problem. Thanks for coming up. All right, next up we got Goddess Miriam. What's going on? Goddess, if you, uh, I don't know if you realize it now, but you are muted. I don't know if you stepped away or whatever the case may be. Maybe she stepped away. I'll bring her down and when she's ready, she can come back up. Next up, we got Denzimus. What's going on? Hello. What's going on? Yeah. Um, so basically, to start off, let me just say no tangibles, no votes. Um, listen, listen, that's the mantra <laughs> for the year. OK, that is the mantra for us in 2024. And the way it's looking, I think it's going to and the way it's looking, I think it's going to have a stronghold. But the other one, of course, that they've added on now is vote the couch 2020 <laughs> <laughs> yes sir yes indeed you know you know. So, you know you know what should be so funny if some if black people got like like some i don't know how to do it if they was able to get like some voting pins or something like that and they put the pin on their couch and took a picture of it say look i voted for the couch <laughs> you know i'm you know i'm actually surprised nobody has done that yet to be honest i'm, I'm really surprised nobody has done I'm, that li I'm putting shirts. it out. I'm, <laughs> listen i'm putting it out there now so just know that if anybody did it you know, <laughs> like in the coming months y'all heard it from me first i'm just saying <laughs> yeah make sure you get it trademarked <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah I'm, I'm personally you know i won't be voting for neither one of these candidates um i just don't see the point in well, Trump is Trump, and then Joe Biden is just a tr an atrocious person, in my opinion. Though, I um, I was done with him when he uh had this whole migrant situation happen. I mean, I was done with him before that, but especially since this migrant situation, because um, you know, personally, well, not personally, um, I'm affected by it because I literally almost got stabbed by one of these migrants the other day. Wow. So um. Oh wow! That's I'm great. just like, yeah. Um, I live up. I live in New Jersey. I frequent Hoboken a lot, and uh, you know, I was just walking around, and yeah, one of them literally pulled the knife on me. I'm just like, what in mm -hmm. the hell? What in the hell? And I'm like, these are the people that this foolish man is letting over, and yet he's giving all of them money. I don't even want to. Okay, not to be too vulgar, but another situation. One of them was, uh, how do I say this? Uh, Speaking code, use coded language. If, if yeah, you can. they were they were doing something in public. Okay, oh, okay, I, yeah, I, I, I'm, okay, I'm not okay. going to. Yeah, you don't say. It. Yeah. I, I, get, I get what you. That's why I said please use coded language because I think I knew where you were going with it, but now I know. Yeah, not, if, but we, but we like we all you, grown, we all grown here, so we know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know how to say. It. If you watch one of Phil's videos about how they were leaving stuff on people's doorsteps then you know what i'm talking about oh uh, oh uh, 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 so yeah yeah, that, yeah that's that's disgusting yeah and i'm just like this dude is literally doing this in public where everybody can see him and i'm just like okay these people and, and you know i'm not trying to talk down upon people because i know all of them aren't like that but it's like these people are literally well some of them are like literally one stroke away from being considered an animal the way that they act um on top of that, you know, they're just giving them all of this money and all this stuff. It's like, why would I vote for somebody who's doing all of that? Like, you're literally giving all of these people money. And then when it comes to black people, you want to sit here and play in our damn faces like we're stupid. Like, are you serious? No, I'm not about to sit here and go out and waste my gas money or 15 minute walk to go vote for this man. Hell no. That's why I told that's why I told people they 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 my biggest pet peeve is to insult my intelligence. They think we are politically dumb, but they don't realize we know way more than they you know put upon us. Like, you know, because they always they always have to put us into this thing because they keep always hyping themselves up saying how high their IQ is when it's not even that <laughs> damn high. Oh my god, yes. I can't tell you how many times I've had to deal with those type of people on the them folks on my job who think they're the smartest thing since sliced bread. It's like, come on now. This is y'all, y'all aren't as smart as y'all think y'all are. And we're not as dumb as they think we are. They think they are. So this right. they're they're gonna be in for a surprise when these when um when the elections come up. And you know, another thing that's really <laughs> funny to me is um their denial. Like they're really doing everything they can to convince themselves that they're still good in the game. Mm-hmm. 
It's, it's just, <laughs> you know, I've, I've never seen how, I've never seen such a denial before. It's like everything is going against them at this point. And I don't know, I don't know why they think Kamala Harris of all people is going to be able to save them. <laughs> it's just comical how they keep trying to push her out. It's like of all the people, and you know, I don't know what it is about that older generation. It's like, they do not want to get out of the way of power and let us younger people take control. I don't understand. It. Mm, oh, that, yeah. And like I said, and, and, and that's something else they have in common. Like, look at how the like look at the Supreme Court. They literally, literally let them stay on there until they are dead. Oh, and you know, it's funny that you said that. Um, did you hear about George? God, no. Clyburn quitting or something like that. Yeah, shout and shout out to um Afro Elite. He was in here early. I don't know if he's still in here or not, but he did mm. a whole um live stream uh talking about that. And believe it or not, that was my first time actually hearing about him mm. uh, saying that he was stepping down. And I'm just sitting here saying to myself, "Well, it's about goddamn time. Maybe he sees the writing on the wall, and that's why he's deciding to like finally step down. Maybe he knows something we don't. But either way." You know, he, he was he's about to finally get up out of there. Yes, I said the same thing. Thank God, because in my opinion, he was absolutely freaking useless to the black community all the time that he was in there. I just don't you know, I could never be a politician because I, I just there's a foundation of black American. I could not just be a politician mm -hmm. and watch my people go through a shit show in life and do nothing. I don't understand like how as a how as a politician, a black person, you could just, you could see all the stuff that's happening to us and sit there and do nothing. I just don't understand it. But again, when you, I imagine that the reason why these black politicians get into office is because they're probably narcissistic, selfish and everything in between. Right. I imagine that's the reason why, but you know, thankfully, okay. Thankfully, the older generation seems to be dying out. The cool generation seems to be dying out. I just hope going forward that um, we as a community, as FBAs, we learn to become more politically, politically smarter and vote for people who are actually going to do something for Foundation of Black Americans specifically. You know, personally, I don't have nothing against no other group, but I really wish as a people we would stop trying to include other people because they damn sure don't include us in, in anything that they do. That's like, right. um, I don't, I, think, I don't know what. And I think the help with the new black media, that's helping quite a bit. And you know, it is because when you look at certain people on lamestream media outlets, they throw subliminal shots at us. Like, look at what, they sure act like they don't know us. Like, look, at what Roland, <laughs> look at what Roland Martin get up there and do all doing all the sassy stuff with his dashiki mumu. His movie, yeah, so, got cheeky. Always, so they been so they're aware of us. They know us. They know us by name. Uh, they may not say our names, but they'll they'll say subliminal things like we can't catch what they're saying. And yes, so they're def they're definitely well aware that we are here. We are here to stay. We are we are not going anywhere, and we cannot be moved. We're like yes, a and they're we're like we're like a fortress. Yes, and we are going to get our uh, reparations. They're just delaying the inevitable. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much all I had to say. I don't want to take up more of your time. Be one as always. Be one. Appreciate you. Yes. Shout out for the Dizimus for coming up. Okay, I think God is uh, Miriam has her stuff together, so I'm gonna bring her back up. What's going on? I do. Thank you for that. Good afternoon, um, brother Torian. Uh, Be one. Salute to you, brother. Be one. Um, very, very wonderful. Um info as usual um going back into um when you were stating the beginning of um where we stood in the republican party and how some were moderates and it started off as a biracial thing um and that's why we say in our grassroots movement when we're fighting for our reparations that certain people just cannot be the mouthpiece um for it because people have dual uh, allegiance and it becomes a hot hot mess but um not all our brothers and sisters just that they have to be vetted and, and really you know really vetted um if they are going to be in significant um positions but um yeah i'm an independent 
as well. And um, I'm not for neither party and um, definitely voting, voting the couch if um, I can see nothing that's offered in the way of, you know, anti-FBA um, um, hate crime bill. We need our tangibles. We need our reparations. Definitely. <clears throat> we need um, immigration moderation um, control as well as massive deportation. Um, you know, I have nothing against those who went through the process to become naturalized uh, American citizens. And um, even that need um, moderation to a certain degree because, you know, all what's going on, especially with these new American parties and all this other um, situations going on that they are working against us. Um, you know, they've assimilated into this system um, with the ruling class and they chose to be tools. And then you get along with your um, boule um, snambos, if you will. And um, like you say, it's like a factory cranking them out. Same dress um, mm -hmm. style, whether it's male or female. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, the same, you know, um, PC talking points. Um, I'm approved that I'm more PC than I, than the actual PC person. So this is just insane. Um, and um, we just have um, a whole lot of um, discord, if you will, and um, disruptors that we have to keep our eyes on and keep our focus together and um, just keep pushing through. And I just want to know um, your thoughts um, also to further elaborate on those um, type of um, clowns um like that one comedian and i don't know if you've seen the one oh i know who you're talking did. about i know exactly who you're talking about i have listen i have my video um coming oh, soon about, I might be, oh yeah i have my video coming soon about him but i had to it was a it was more stuff that came out that i had to go back and add more stuff in like the video initially when i recorded it, it was probably about 15 minutes when I had to go back and add more additional stuff, the video is now at almost 30 minutes. I can believe so, it. So, yeah, that video will be, that video will be coming. So, I, trust me, I know, I ain't forget. I, the, video, the, the video is coming. <laughs> I, I have a it. lot to say about that. I have a lot. Of, I might have to re I might have to change the title of the video because so much additional stuff came out even past yeah, what you he may initially said about George Floyd. Up. You may have to do a triple video on that fool because he just keep being, um, you know, gathering more and more material, and he is so offensive. And uh, oh my gosh, he 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 is a hot mess. And yeah, um, yeah, oh yeah. But one thing I can say though that I'm glad is that is that black people push back so hard on him that he literally indeed. has to he has to constantly try to explain himself out of the situation. But black people are not allowing him to just slither his way out of it. Because we're over it, like we are tired of it. I say one of the most on code things I saw black people do was get up and walk out. That was number one. That but then the fact that he had to get on there and try to uh, apologize, he didn't even apologize right. Then he went on to you know Willie D, and he yes. looks like an even bigger fool over there. So he literally is seeing everything crumble around him. I said, and then on top of that, white people do not like when they when you say something that they like and then you go back and apologize so now you about to lose the base that, that just said that they're going to support you they like it when you stand 10 toes down on your anti-blackness especially if you a black person they're gonna prop you up now you probably just lost your base there so he so everything is starting to crumble around him and then i found out that he's that he's half cuban his dad oh, yeah. Yeah, his dad yeah, i just found out that his dad <laughs> is cuban and his mom is black yeah. and then there was a space that was held where his mom and his uncle was in there and they were trying to cape for him too it's like that yes. whole that whole situation is is crazy but trust me the video about david lucas for those of y'all who are unaware who we're talking about that'll be coming very soon but like i said i had to go back and add more additional stuff in there but yeah it's definitely it's coming very soon I'm so happy to hear it, brother um, Torian, because we need to do um, extensive work on this pandering Lucas because um, he is a blight um, on, on our lineage and he's an anchor baby and his mentality is more so of his Cuban's fa his Cuban father, mm -hmm. um, just like um, Ty Diggs, who has a, a I think he has, a, I don't know if he's Cuban, but he is a, a Hispanic descent of some way, form, or fashion. Um, and 
um, it's just enough that they think they have carte blanche to um, sit up there and spit all the um, su suspected, you know, um, ruling class um, think tank ideology and um um just just the foolery that they um spit and um out here and think there's no consequences well they're gonna understand um the power of the black grassroots um yeah you're gonna you're gonna have to pay you're gonna have to pay for what it is that you do and um yeah you shrinking yourself because he think that he have big names behind him um monkey rogan and all of those people mm -hmm. of those ilks and he think that he could do stuff without you know um without any consequences but um yeah being on code long as we're on code and long as we keep um making our voices um heard and um making sure that this 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 food um message is always um met with some form of rebuttal and and not accepted i think that yeah we're on the right path um thank you for this program as usual brother and no i'll um i'll finish this by saying um you know um shout out to um professor black truth yes that that program was excellent that he said this morning quote our master teacher um john henry clark you know that what are black people trying to conserve the base word is to conserve conserve back to what what are we holding on to that you know what i'm saying we're more i think we're more traditionalist in our own culture and being on code with our own culture and yeah. we've always had you know a very um i guess somewhat formal um type of mindset and behavior because we were the mothers and fathers of teaching moral, you know, morality um, to um, most other people around, especially our, the ruling class. So we were their first teachers, but they want you to believe that it's the other way around because we were the one not only raising our children, but raising theirs. So um, I yield my time with that. Thank you, Brother Torian. All right. I appreciate it. Appreciate you coming up. Shout out to Goddess for coming up. Next up, we got <laughs> excuse me buying this cookout order i can <sighs> what's going on can i get a white national anthem there brother can i get you <laughs> to sing it off and i finish the stanzas can i get that <laughs> did you say you was from from maryland that's the mason dixon line so you was a southern boy now come on let's get it <laughs> this lift th every th dog th th and well, I can't say the F word on your on your program, correct? No. Okay, so so no 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 lift every dog in F. You know what I'm talking about there. Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I just oh, want to make oh, sure you, you know that I'm black. <laughs> oh, why you got that? <laughs> yes, sir. I just want to make sure you knew that I was black. Wow. All right. All right. I'm gonna stop fucking around. How are you, young man? I am doing great. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> it I know sometimes it can be stressful talking about mm -hmm. these clowns as I know. I know you will be talking about them in a couple of hours. Oh yeah, as as you were talking to the people I I'm actually making the thumbnail right now and th this thumbnail is going to be legendary cuz the things that we're going to talk about today I have on the thumbnail and I know some of them stuff you didn't even hear yet. Well, I can't wait to hear it. Oh uh, yeah, but uh back to the Republicans. Um November 5th, 2024, the reset, the great reset. You know how they talked about the great reset in 2020? Yeah, mm -hmm. 2024 is the actual great reset and it's going to be a beautiful thing. I can't wait. I I can't, man. Hey, bro, do you know how many storage units we can be able to go uh bid on because they're going to have to put their stuff in storage while they look for a new place and they're going to renege cuz they the white people ain't going to give them no more money? Right. That's why Professor Black Truth was talking about that James Craig. He said all he's doing is trying to look for a job. That's why he's just hopping from place to place trying to find a place of employment and no one's tiring him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it's uh, it's going to be. Um, do you have a public storage near you? I, I would I would keep tabs on that. Uh, yes, I yeah. do. I, yeah, I do. Because we know we got some Maryland Republicans and MAGA people down there. They're going to learn very quickly, very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> but I feel bad for you on January 20th, 2025, because if you don't go to DC, bro, <laughs> that, that traffic's gonna be crazy. You're gonna have nothing but a bunch of liberals yelling, a bunch of MAGA people running around uh, acting like oh, they want something. You, you talking about the you talking about the inauguration? Mm-hmm. Listen, 
I'm not anywhere near that. They like those are the like for something like that. I make sure that I am home that day because <laughs> I'm not about to be anywhere near that. Them train lines going to be so backed up. They're going to be the the, yeah. the roads are going to be a mess. It's going to be so many detours. And I told people before the detours in D.C. are ridiculous because D.C. is nothing but a bunch of one ways. Anyway, you can get turned around up there if you want to, but you're going to get turned all the way around in some place that took you where you were supposed to take you five minutes to get to going to take you 15. So, you know, uh, they can have that. <laughs> hey, I might put Marion Barry on the ballot. Hey, <laughs> I'm not a bad that. idea. These people, boy, I listen. You still, you're still young in this, so you can, you could still escape. <laughs> Don't go down this political hole. I'm telling you, if you do it, it's. Oh, trust you're me. You're gonna, you're gonna have, you're gonna have the non-FBA hairline. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I'm try, I'm not I'm like I'm not gonna say I'm not knee deep in it like you know into the political realm like you are because like that always like I always said that's more of your feel but there are some things that are I guess you could say stick out to me that I feel like I have to address because mm -hmm. it's like if I don't it'll weigh heavy on my spirit and I don't like that so I have to I feel like I have to say something yeah but sometimes you know you you want to ignore it but then you can't ignore it because it could help somebody else. Yeah. So you have to read it. And then mm -hmm. you're just like, like, I don't even tell my wife anymore that Ukraine get more money because she just kiss her teeth and walk away. <laughs> wow. Like once she was like, okay, fine, whatever. And then he's like, this is like, in this like the 18th package they got. I'm like, yeah, pretty much. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> mm. Welcome. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to have fun today. There's going to be a lot of, uh, we, we calling this the Legion of Fools. Yeah, it's, it's gonna shoot, be fun. That, shoot, that, shoot, that could be a whole series because I can. Oh. I highly doubt you can. You can cover all of that in one stream. Nah, but I do have a new series coming called it. And <laughs> I call it. You remember how Kurt Angle used to say his three eyes? Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna do a series based on that. Do these international uh, influencers? That's why I call it the international idiot influencer. And we, we got a lot of people we got to cover. But anyway, let me finish this thumbnail, get the show ready, and then, uh, yeah, hopefully y'all show up there at three o'clock because we're gonna have fun tonight. No, oh, definitely. Make yes, sure y'all go over. Make sure y'all go over to Kid Gravity's channel and subscribe if you haven't done and so. And just before already. I go there, their partner, yeehaw, Trump twenty twenty four, not. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I'll, I'll see you over there. He said at three o'clock. I uh, shout out to Kid Gravity. Next up, we got Jacoby. What's going on? Uh, what's going on, Tori? Um, yeah, I'm good. Uh, so that dude, that, <laughs> that that dude wearing the black dude wearing the the 1776 buck in his eyes. Yes, he is not helping the situation. Neither Charlie yeah. Kirk is. I'm just no. gonna kind of put that out. So, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> you know, as for the Democrats, man, they they brought this on themselves. Whatever happens this year. It's going to be their fault. If people want to sit on the couch 2024, do that because they don't deserve it. If people most, I think most black folks are going to vote for Trump and people want to sit on the couch. But mm -hmm. whatever happens, I know the Democrats are going to suffer and I'm going to enjoy every last bit of it because I, I saw them give $9,000 checks, giving them home stipends, giving them breaking their back for all these illegal migrants. They haven't gave black folks not one damn thing, not one foundation of black America, one thing, not even a hate crime bill. Right. And and you wonder why folks are sitting on the couch or thinking about voting for Trump because of the border. I actually sat it out three presidential. I didn't vote for Hillary. I didn't vote for Trump. I didn't vote for uh, Biden. And I sure didn't vote for Trump. I sat it out. But when this when they when the dude just opened up the border like that and just said, "Come on in," he got he got black folks getting beat up. He got folk he got folks black folks being gentrified out of their neighborhood, been there for <laughs> for years. Yeah, they talking about like, they talking about they talking about leaving. I say, yeah. don't leave. Don't, yeah, this is like yeah, this is your leave. home. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is your this is your home. Like, why yeah. you don't don't you don't leave to make room for them? It's interesting that you're bringing that up yeah. because my next uh midday stream which is going to be on wednesday is actually going to be that as a matter of fact the title of that 
midday stream is going to be called illegal migrant madness somebody sent me a, um like a whole bunch of stories about what's going on with them literally in one day last week and i was going to talk about them individually but i said nah let me just throw all of them into one stream almost like a dump so and it's like three or four different stories and all of them happen within the same week yeah so, it's, it's just so, I'm gonna talk. so so the fact that you know when i started initially talking about them i would probably talk about them maybe once a month but now it's gotten to the point where I'm talking about them damn near every week and multiple times a week. Like last week, for instance, y'all got two South of the Bordarian stories from two different locations involving two different things. And then on the live stream that I did last week, y'all got like three or four updates involving them mm -hmm. from something that happened the week before. So y'all are finding now that more frequently these stories are popping up and that's not a good thing. No, but also if you watch, see, I watch the Forbes and sometimes the C-SPAN and mm -hmm. I know, I know it gets boring, but that's actually kind of the most real news you're ever going to watch without propaganda. And, uh, they, the, the, if I believe they mentioned the FBI director is warning the Biden administration, look, something bad is going to happen. They something bad what, is already happening. That's the yeah, thing. I know, but they, they talk about more like a on a terrorist national threat level, and they don't know exactly how it's going to happen. But they said, look, the way this is happening, you got Chinese, you got all types of people coming through the border. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. And, you don't, and, you, and I'm seeing it. I can see it right now. I can see right now. Someone's going to get some shit. They're going to do some shit. They're going to plan it out, and some shit's going to happen. And everybody thought nine eleven was they're going to make 9-11 look like it was a commercial and i don't know why nobody doesn't see that i know you see that mm. i see that because without borders no security you you mm -hmm. allow anything to yeah come exactly in you're, you're you're literally vulnerable like you're yeah, you, people vulnerable yeah you, you you're prone to bio 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 weapons it, all types of stuff and the thing about it i know we're kind of bouncing all around but Everybody needs to be on their P's and Q's and kind of keep the like E40s to so keep your head on the swivel, man, because you really can't trust anybody out here like that. And, you know, you have to just kind of be aware of your surroundings, especially in Chicago and New York. And because the, the, these folks are basically given a license to kill and do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. And, and practically get I, away with it. Yeah. And I don't know why the a AOC and joe biden all of them are allowed to get away with this this isn't this supposed to be illegal oh this was the plan all along like yeah. i always tell people this is this isn't something that just happened overnight this no, was they... something that was planned for years as a matter of fact going back to my initial topic about the republican party mm -hmm. um wasn't it under the Reagan administration where they yeah. did something for yes. back in like 86 or something like that, giving them yeah. amnesty or something like that? Yes, yeah, seven, no, million, no, yeah, seven million illegals. Yeah, I remember that. But but notice that they don't bring that up. I said, if you really want to go back, like, you know, talk about how this all started, let's go back to that. And probably even before that. Mm -hmm. But because everything is like happening so fast right now and because we live in like a social media age and everything is like right there in your face and you can see it now it's like okay now we have another person we can point the finger as it pertains to this so i like i said this is getting like it, it's not even getting out of control it's out of control and yeah, i think it, it, it's it, gotten so it's gotten so far gone right now it's like okay what is it going to take to not only slow this down, but to stop it all together. You know what's going to have to happen? I, 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 people are going to get mad at me, but they're going to have to ratify the 14th Amendment. And that's what's probably going to have happened to happen. But that's never going to happen. Because when they came over here and they're not supposed to, he had a lot of women getting pregnant. So now their children is now American citizens, citizen. first generation yeah. born. And the Fourteenth Amendment, if I'm reading the right amendment right, that was meant for financial for the foundation of Black Americans. I'm sorry, I'm tired. And um, so, but are they going to ratify the Fourteenth Amendment? No. And you have over six million illegals. By the time a new president comes into office, 
it'd be in the 20 millions or more. And I don't know how you would be able to stop that. Um, and so uh, whatever happens is gonna happen. But what I say to this, um, somebody needs to be held accountable. I know these bootlicks need to be held accountable, but they never do. They just right. walk around among us like nothing happened. Like they get to walk. You just fuck around, walk around scot free. Like, like you didn't do shit. Like, like you didn't do anything wrong. That that's what kills me. Mm-hmm. That, that that that's what I don't get. Where where's and they the get, and they get where's mad the tough at love us. at? Yeah, where, where's get, the tough love at? And they get mad at us because we're not voting for them or not supporting them or anything like that. I'm like, well, you you gave us your ass to kiss. You yeah. told us you pretty much let us know which direction y'all went, and we're not following you. And then that's when they start coming up with all the insults and all that. I said, listen, y'all can insult all you want. Our feelings are not hurt. I know mine aren't. No, I'm angry. My anger gives me strength to get through every day and understand. And I don't need to get on social media um, every day to express that. That's the part about being on code, mm-hmm. not emotional. I get when every time I see it. I just look at it every once in a while, I'll comment sometimes in your section or whatever, but the code is being silent. What do you mean by being silent? Understand what you're seeing and know what you need to do. Exactly. And, and because, uh, the, the, you know, we, you know, and I'm understanding, I was like, you know what? They have right now, they're complaining that they're $30 trillion in debt. They have given money to just about anybody. But they bring this on themselves because they don't want to. They want to spite their nose in front of black folks' faces. We can actually help out this economy. That money can go right back into the economy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like but like I came across want- the post today on X about like they keep. I'm a. I did. I, I recorded a video about that. I'm not going to explain like what it, what it said, but it's the usual typical talking point when it comes to about oh black people don't need reparations like that. I said if y'all only knew. What that could do for the economy if they cut the check. But yeah. see, because it says reparations and it's coming to black people, that's where the disconnect comes in because it's going to us. And they're scared that we're going to get a fine. Well, we are going to get a financial bump behind it, but that's what they're scared of because, again, they are at a point where they've never had to compete with us. So what do they do? They implement all of these things so they didn't so they wouldn't have to. Yeah, and it's and it's a self it's a self destructive uh, behavior, and it's just that, it, you know, they they may tell themselves they're not racist, and they may believe they're not racist, but your action says another thing. And if mm-hmm. you can't look at yourself and understand that, then there's there's no talking because you've already convinced yourself in your mind that's your that is your ideology. Because you gravitate towards Europeans because you are a European, right? You you emphasize with the European, but you see what Black folks have went through through all the years, and through all you know the history a lot of times better than we do, and you choose not to do anything about it, but yet you want to talk about being Christian. Let me tell you something about being a Christian. A Christian is paying your bills on time. A Christian, if I take something from from a person, I need to pay that back. Okay, being honest, being straight up, that, that, that stuff kills me every single time. Uh, Christian values, okay, reparations, oh, 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 oh the budget, oh, the budget, oh, 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 everybody wants to be a CPA for all of a sudden. You miss me with that, man. If you want to be a Christian, pay the bill. It's a bill. I have a credit card debt. I pay my credit card debt because that is the right thing to do. That is the honest thing to do. Because that energy, what you put out, is what you get back. But I tell you what, I'm to the point where whatever happens, happens. Because you thought you were trying to replace the black vote. You thought you can replace the, the black the black people who've been here for over 400 years. You thought you can replace them. Okay. Good luck. See how that works out for you. Because usually what we do is we we fall back and we and we usually re- regroup. And then once we regroup, there is no letting the people in your circle. Because we we done the trusting. We 
we done sharing the culture. We share the, 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 the culture of country music. You hijack that and then you bitch about Beyonce doing country music, but you we don't say anything when you do rap. <laughs> and we don't say anything when you do rock. And we learning the hard way from this and say, you know, we're, you guys think we're just, you know, fucking stupid. You guys think that we're that gullible. And maybe at one time we might have been gullible, but you're dealing with a new generation of black folks today. And it's really not the smoke you really want. And that, that Lucas dude who talked about, I would have shot George Floyd. I saw that. We all mm -hmm. saw that. I saw it on Queen Accountability. I said that, you know, I had a bunch of coons in, in the comment section, you know, justifying that. About, of course, it's just it's just coming. It's just coming. Like, of course they did. Of course they. I'm of like, course they did. Of course they did. Like I'm I said, like, they all they all talk from the same playbook. Yeah. They all wear the same costume. They don't have an original thought in their head. They literally piggyback off what or as they regurgitate what PC says all the time. That's why I do not take them seriously. It, it, they are so yeah. laughable. Yeah, that's why it's so easy. To, that is why it's so easy to clown them. And like it, Kate Gravity it, said, yeah. the grift will be over on November the fifth. Yeah, and, but here's the thing about the grift: everybody's trying to emulate somebody. You can't be Paul Mooney. You can't be Patrice O'Neill. Those folks are solidified in their own genre. And you know, this dude's trying to be edgy, and edgy doesn't mean funny. Matter of fact, you're just a fool. You're just an idiot. And you don't get it, you know, you, you don't, there's something, there's some lines you don't cross. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't even apologize. He don't, don't apologize. even, don't, don't apologize. Don't, 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 the so-called apology that he did give wasn't even really an apology. No, but that's not the point. That's so much of a common sense thing. No comedians touch that. And Corey Holcomb is edgy. He don't even touch that. So why would you think? You can touch that because, because what you, you don't mean? respect black folks. Exactly. And look, at, and look at who he's around. He's a, he's around like Joe Rogan and all of them. He even said that he has a majority white audience. I mean, when he said those two things right there, that That's told me everything I needed to know about his so-called lane of comedy. It makes you wonder what he has said before then and what if he still has a career what he will say after that he i don't know what kind of pr team he has or if he has one at all but the way it sounds it sounds like he doesn't have one or if he does they need to be fired and replaced whoever want to want to work with him but i don't see how you're going to move that much forward from there you pretty much solidified for us what type of person you are because i remember seeing him on all deaf i remember seeing him when he was on different segments because i used to be subscribed to them Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing him quite a bit. And that's what, oh, I said, that's where I knew him from. That's what, because I couldn't, like, I didn't, I couldn't remember his name, but I remember his face. And he was good on there. Like, you would have never, like, if you saw him when he was on All Deaf, yeah. It's like literally looking at two different people because he never sounded like that. So I don't know what happened, I guess, because when he started to go out on his own and do his own thing. That's what he decided to do. And now that we know who you pander to with your so-called comedy, that's going to make people look up any type of stand-up you did before that to see what you were talking about then. Because a lot of people didn't know who this dude was. It's a yeah, shame that the way people... It's a shame now that people come to know who you are because you want it to be quote-unquote controversial. And that's another thing I've been saying too. A lot of these so-called black conservatives, they do this not only with the, only the intent of going viral and of course grifting for money, but also because they want to see who could be more controversial than the other. I'm like, y'all are all talking about the same damn thing. When, uh, Whenever there's something that goes on involving <coughs> black people, here they come ready to talk about uh, what's going on. Like, for instance, when what happened with Tyree Nichols? You had Fagum coming out there, yeah. making up lies about him. I'm sure BCP said the same thing. They all say the same thing. When one, what one says, the other says they might be, they might, they might stretch the content out a little bit more, but it's all the same exact thing because they all share the same type of audience. Yeah, and and it's kidding. It's lame. And even thinking about George Floyd, it just makes I can't. I exactly. Right here, exactly. I, I can't. I think I can't. But, think, but hey, Jacoby, I'm gonna. But Jacoby, I'm gonna have to let you go because I have one more person that I want to yeah. get up here before I shut it down. But I do appreciate you coming up, though. You too, man. All right, peace, man.
cool. All right, the last person we got is Miss Nisi. What's going on? Good afternoon, Torian. Good afternoon. You, you know I'm gonna give my summary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've listened to everybody. This is my statement. The government has shown us clearly they don't give a you know what about us. So we as foundational black Americans need to sit our asses on our couches come November 5th, 2024. Also, watching everything that has been going on since the beginning of this year, the hamster wheel is speeding up on this shit show. Mm -hmm. And me personally, this just me. I'm sitting back and I'm watching. It needs to crash and burn. And it will. It okay. will. And come time for the um, DNC uh, primary or whatever convention. Mm, I'm having flashbacks of the riots. Uh, uh, the DNC um, rise back in 1968. That's what's flashing in my mind. I'm looking for something major to pop off doing that, doing the DNC. I am. We shall see. And these illegal immigrants, wait till they step up on uh, the elite PC front porch. That's coming. That is coming. And that's all I got to say. You I continue to be blessed. Thank you for the education. And I'm out. Bye-bye. Shout out to Miss Nisi for coming up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to conclude the today's stream. Of course, I let it run a little bit longer, mainly because I knew people. a lot of people were off today, unless, of course, you were essential workers or if you're watching from a place that doesn't have President's Day recognized as a federal holiday. But it was one super chat that I did miss. Shout out to Wannabe, Mis Wannabe Mystic for the $5 super chat. He says, Charlie Kirk and put Kirk with three K's at the end is two steps away from David Duke. Oh, if only we could be so lucky. But shout out to everybody that came through. Shout out to everybody that came up and lended their voice to the topic. Like I said, my next midday stream will be on Wednesday. It's going to be titled Ill Illegal Migrant Madness. So I know some people will have some opinions about that as well. Uh, shout out to again to everybody on Patreon. I think y'all will get a new Patreon video tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. I gotta go check all the members, people on Instagram, Twitter, and Discord. Everyone who sends me stories, I'm greatly appreciative of that. Y'all will be seeing or hearing from me tomorrow with the 11 a.m. Eastern Time premiere video, which is going to be about that Moms for Liberty member who got arrested and charged for stealing out of Target. So y'all are not going to want to miss is that one again make sure if y'all are available at 3 p.m eastern time to go over to kid gravity's page because he will be doing a live stream at 3 p.m eastern time on his channel with that being said y'all enjoy the rest of your day i will be back, be back here again tomorrow like i said be safe and be warm